Yeah, it's just a quick tap. You'll uh, see the little okay. red dot on there. Got it. You're good. I meant to ask you before. That's all right. I was trying to catch up with everybody. 14-3. 39. Every time we talk about slave digging, <laughs> That sounds terrible when you said that. But yeah, we're talking about the, the service that we're talking about the slaves. Banging out the slaves. Banging them out. Oh, I see a bunch of football balls walking around the parking lot. Right? That's like this person here in the car. Like, what the oh, the Why are there weird honkies walking around with cell phones in the parking lot? Yeah. They're all walking randomly. Like, what's the matter with them? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking we get to get a video afterwards where we get to relive this. That's right. No? <laughs> Nothing? I mean, he's in the dock. 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 Monalyza, talk to me. What color was your hair? How tall were you? Says, and then I'm standing up, and then my childhood, all from different DJs. Can I freeze or no? What's that? Don't freeze. What is no. your uh, DJs, it wasn't song lyrics. DJs said uh, Papa says, and then I'm standing up, and then my childhood. He said Papa is like 2.9, 2. 2. and 3.3. 3. No, 
just now when you said it? Yeah. Papa? Papa? Hey, anybody else hear anything from the spirit box before I explain the game a second a little bit further? Okay. Yeah. Alright, so let me explain what these guys actually do. If you have a video camera and you want to stop and give your hands a break, by all means you can do that. So until I know you're going to here, like I said, it's a staple. We all tell the same damn story, but we're not doing a campfire marshmallow tour like everybody else. We're actually ghost hunting, so let's kind of get into some of the details. You didn't hear anything along the way here? We were actually doing pretty good over there. Um, so, but anyway, so... Broke it. Actress? Yes. Hello. Hello. Excuse us, Dad. You good? Come on through, man. How you doing? Good, how are you? You good? He was blue. He was blue. Blue's blue. <laughs> So now you guys see how large the other tours can get. We're actually allowed to go to 20 people. I usually stop mine at 10 to 12. So just so you guys have that idea. So when Chris emailed me, it was a matter of like, uh, yeah, okay, I can do 13. Um, so anyway, um, but when that happens again, we will stop talking, or I will stop talking and just flip the seas and let them pass by. Some of them stop, some of them don't. But anyway. Um, Dueler's Alley. Let's get into that. So again, every tour tells the same story. There was a doctor that moves down here from Rhode Island. So Matt is specifically going to be looking for the letters RI on his device. Uh, you actually have two red lights on right now. It looks like you turned on the uh, tap feature. So do you see this, the red light on the right hand side? Yes, sir. There's a dial below it. Turn it counterclockwise till it turns off. That's clockwise. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the, other, the other counter. The other counter. Now, Dr. Ladd moves down here from Rhode Island, so he's going to be looking for the letters RI specifically, only because it's relevant in one of two ways. I'm going to talk about that here in just a second. Um, Do but you have them? Not yet. He will. Oh. Uh, reset it again. Like, that's crazy. Well, it's because you have the, the tap on. It keeps turning on because of the tap. I, I'm not Jeez. touching anything. Nerd. Come on. Nerd. 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 I didn't do anything but help the thing. <laughs> Nerd. 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 I heard that his hands are really soft. Nerd. <laughs> Sure. Uh, this is all day, every day for you? Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was like, do you guys ever feel bad for me? I just I want you to get real data. Like, did this all change? You started 11. The girl twice. Did you feel bad? It's still a I know. It's crazy, right? Well, the glasses. I got you. I'm learning. You know what I'm excited You got a V? Yeah. You went to so hang on just a second, guys, because I actually need to explain the double eleven. Um, so this is off the beaten path of what we're doing specifically in this alley. Um, I actually recently lost a good friend of mine. Um, she was actually part of the like the consultant team. She was a psychic, um, known her for many years, and her name was Sandy. And she was actually she was big gung ho about her birthday. Can anybody guess what her damn birthday was? Eleven eleven. Eleven eleven. More recent. So. Just it's last week, we actually had three things pop up when I was going through the spirit box recording, and I didn't realize it until it was all in the same vicinity, because sometimes I'm just writing shit down, and I'm writing stuff down, and then I look at it as a whole to kind of see if, like, were there any clues that match up. Um, we actually had the term book signing, her name show up, and then a few more words go by, and we had the name Carl show up. I actually met Sandy through another psychic friend of mine named Carl at one of my book signings. So again, this was, she just passed less than a month ago. So again, it's been kind of a, a weird thing, but now we have her birthday showing up, and I want to know if something else is going to pop up specifically about it. Um, so anyway, let's get back to Dr. Ladd. I just wanted to let you guys know why I was kind of like, what else did you hear? Kind of mentality. But anyway, Dr. Ladd, he moves down here because he's supposed to get married to his fiance, Amanda. Amanda just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents. She has an attorney helping her out with all of his cash. The attorney thinks that Dr. Ladd is just after Amanda's money. He tells Amanda, get rid of the doctor. He comes to Charleston to prove that he's not after her money. The coachman that brought him into town set him up to be robbed and killed. Somebody was walking by and seeing what was about to happen. His name was Ralph Isaacs. Ralph has the same initials as where the doctor came from, hence the letters R-I that Matt is looking for right now. 
However, we always need a secondary clue so we know which character this actually belongs to. We were getting RI all the time on the Red Spirit boxes. That's exactly why I bought the Ouija board device, to see if we, we can get definitive letters to make sure it wasn't just an anomaly. But anyway, and we have had it several times in the past six months that I've had that device. Back to Ralph and the Doctor. Ralph tells Dr. Ladd, dude, you don't want to stay here. I know this guy, he's going to try to kill you. So, come with me to 59 Church Street, you can rent a room, you'll be safe and good to go. The doctor took him up on the offer, they became friends. The longer the doctor stays here, the more money he's making. He's proving his point that he wasn't after Amanda's money. So, he became known as the Whistling Doctor because Amanda's moving down so they can get married. It's the 1780s, men whistled all the time. But what I will tell you is that every haunted city you're ever going to visit in the future will have a cliched whistling ghost. We all have one. There's actually proof of this one and I'm going to get to that. Anyway, back to Ralph and Dr. Ladd. They go see plays together, but they can't sit next to each other because the doctor makes more money. He gets better seats. That's the hierarchy of Charleston. So, on the way home, after seeing Richard III, they start arguing over the new actress that they would hear in town. She's brand new. They've never seen her before. Dr. Ladd thought she was great. Ralph didn't. The argument turns into Ralph insulting the doctor's fiance Amanda, back home in Rhode Island. It gets very ugly, and they go their separate ways. Ralph has friends around town. He puts an ad in the paper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. Kind of a, you're a disgrace to mentality, kind of, you know, to society kind of mentality, if you get my point. The doctor saw the ad, but rebuttaled with, let's go to Dooler's Alley and finish this, and see what actually comes out of it. Yes, it all started with an ad. So they came down, they took their ten paces, they turned, the doctor points his flintlock in the air and shoots his one shot. He didn't want to kill his friend, which is often what happened at a duel, by the way. Ralph has his one bullet. He puts it in the kneecap on the doctor. He didn't want to kill him either, but he wanted to prove his point that he's still pissed off. Dr. Ladd falls to the ground. His friends picked him up, took him home to 59 Church Street, where he dies 10 days later on November 2nd of 1786. So it is also in November, so we'll take that 11, but that double 11 is what caught my attention. Every tour that comes down here and stops, which he's probably telling the story just on the other side of the wall, tells you to listen for the whistles. Luckily for you, we have three video cameras running plus my voice recorder. You don't need to listen yourself. You can listen in the background when you're going through your shit later on. So, it will also tell you through our spirit boxes we get the word whistle, we've had whistling parts of songs, we've had the word doctor, and these are all medicinal terms we're going to get from here all the way over to the next location because we're going to get that kind of bleed over. So just kind of expect that when we're going to the next space. Now, I will tell you that if you're going to try this on your own and walk all the way through this alley and turn on the voice recorders from your phone, I can't take you all the way down there because I've been kicked out of there and I'm going to get to that in just a minute because um, that's actually the fun part of the story. And no, we're not going to go down there at all. Nobody. So I know Matt, your wheels are already spinning like, oh, we're going to go all the way down and see what the hell's going on down there. So, no. Uh, no, we're not going to send that. So, but anyway, I always throw a whistle down here. No, we're not going downstairs. That's, that's an interesting term too. We'll see what pops up with that. Um, if you're going to try this on your own and listen to that recording later on, just keep in mind every local knows the story. Anybody walking up and down Cumberland or Queen Street throws a whistle down the alley. We all do it. I do it every night, um, especially when I'm going back to my car, which is we just passed it and where I parked my garage. But at any rate, so just kind of keep that in mind. Every local knows the story, so it's not always going to be a legit legitimate thing. So here's how I got booted out of here. This is the fun part. This alley didn't go all the way through this way. There was a wall up there. The reason why is because they needed to block off where all the livestock was kept. This was called Cow Alley before it was Dooler's Alley. So that means that the bricks on the other side have older bricks than the ones we're standing on. Those bricks are sun-dried from slave children. There's a full handprint from a slave child and fingerprint swipes in those bricks down at the end. And I always take my groups down there to show off how far we've come away from slavery. It's all about history for me. I also treat that brick the same way I do with right. That's the last place that you're going to find that kid just so you guys know. We're not going to get any activity out of it at all. Now, November 26th of 2020, I told you he was going to try to sneak off down there. So, November 26th, my entire group of 10 is huddled around this one brick waiting for something to happen. I know nothing's going to happen because the kid's not there. I'm also trying to shoot them along because it's outside the kitchen window of the beautiful mansion at the end of the alley. I'm just trying to be respectful. I didn't know I was out of bounds. I was still new at this. So, the new owner of the mansion came out screaming. He obviously filed a complaint, but my daughter thought it was great because Dad's getting yelled at in real time. She was on the tour that night, and okay. we moved on. The next day was Thanksgiving. I don't tour on Thanksgiving because I worked in retail management for decades, mainly for Walmart before I started doing this, in upper management, if you guys get my point. I'm not working Thanksgiving. The next day was November 28th of 2020. I told my group that night, we either have to reroute or, you know, we can only go down halfway. I decided to reroute, but I also told them I don't believe in the next story because I've never had anything happen over there. I'm a vampire guy, not a pirate person. If you haven't picked up, we're talking pirates now. But anyway, before we left, somebody heard the name Anne on a spirit box. I was like, oh, I didn't tell them who we were going to be investigating, the famous female pirate Anne Bonnie. So I got like, all right, maybe we'll get something. 
We get over there, I told them what little bit I did know about piracy at the time. Somebody else hears the number 300, and I don't know what it means in real time. I write it down, research it. We were there November 28th of 2020, and Bonnie's trial for piracy, November 28th of 1720. We were there on the exact 300th anniversary of her pirate trial. So, I was like, damn it, now I gotta learn about pirates. Because again, I'm not a pirate person. So my problem with pirates is I have a master's degree in creative writing. Everything needs to be factual for me. Like, I need hardcore data to be able to make sense of something. Pirate stories are based off of pirate lore, which is a problem for me. I've read dozens of books on pirates since then, trying to always make sense of what we discuss at the next location. Because again, pirates, like, you know, you were asking me a lot of questions even about slavery along the way, which you guys are going to hear about later on. There's a lot of reading that goes into this. And I'm boring Stephanie, so we're going to have to move here so shortly. I call out every yeah, yawn, just so you guys know. Yeah, um, you guys have probably been out and about all day, if not working. Maybe it means something. You're Maybe it means something. I love it. That's fire. Um, so Steph can't roll. Steph can't hang. Before we yeah. leave, I always True. explain the gate before we go over and discuss pirates. Um, the gate, keep in mind that the alley didn't go all the way through this way. So in the event there was a loser to a duel, this was the shortcut to get to the cemetery on the other side of the wall. Otherwise, they'd have to go all the way down the alley to Queen Street and double back to get up to the cemetery before they could go celebrate with the winner. So that's kind of how why this gate evolved. But the wrought iron was probably put here in the early 1900s, but you can definitely see that the archway was part of the original. This alley dates back pretty far. This alley's been a lot of different things. Right now, it's a ghost tour stop. So that's kind of the way it works. Um, anything that was seen or heard before we go talk about Rated R Pirates? And nobody got my, my very bad, punny dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing seen or heard? Is Valley nope. Derek? Is there a Derek mean anything? No. But that's a name I don't normally see on there. That's the only reason why I kind of like, hmm. Nothing coming up on yours? Damn. All right, Chris, you got anything on yours? I know it's hard to focus on me. It's and, hard to listen. Yeah. If you're both. All right, I say we go learn about crazy pirates. Let's go do this. For those of you with cameras, if you want to keep them on, by all means, you can do so. We will be walking, and we're just going around the block, and or you can stop them and start them back up again when we get over there. Yeah. Can play yeah. It's clear enough that I went, oh, that's weird. Yeah, I'm going to go pee. Anybody else here? I haven't got above zero since the last park we made. getting cooler out though. It's under 80. Yeah, she didn't have to worry about that. <laughs> she might have said that she was because she was a man, or dressed as a man, but that's about it.
I have not. I heard one clear thing that said it was a DJ saying certain words I've never said. Everything else is just been static and noise. Right, pretty vague, but we'll take it. We'll write it down. <sighs> just heard the number 79 very distinctly. Okay. We got that here last night, too. I got it here last night, too. I don't know why. I, hmm. I looked into it. I couldn't find a relevance. So I did get deprived. Oh, there we go. That's, it. that's clear, not a normal radio clear term. Thing. Yeah. That's true. That's what I look for when I'm going through. Just weird shit. Except you got to pay attention. <laughs> yeah. I listen to that every night. I know. Stephanie, how's your work? I've gotten no really new ones. I agree with Allison probably Angels. I heard angels. I did. Heart and angels. Heart communication. You heard communication? The word. Not a single one. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. I'll work. Yeah, how far are we? 
From this up here, like there's no way we have a 15 foot right. person right there. Or that ties. Yeah, that ties. Let me write this down. Mm -hmm. All right, so you guys all gotta go. Here's how I want to go. First off, I need to put an eye on your breathing and make sure that you're ventilating. Could be a big deal. Right? <coughs> <coughs> Is it what? It stinks? Well, you Tripod, so what? Make an excellent tripod. I don't know. This tripod's getting tired. <laughs> My part, I just didn't know how blessed you are, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I would tip over. Look at my nails. Nope. You just told him you gotta sit there for 10 minutes. That means I gotta stand here for 10 minutes. That's the way I took it. I got a chair. Bellman. What sound? Not your type. What <laughs> sounds are coming out of the church? Testament. I didn't even understand that term. Henry Timrod, what sound did we just hear out of Mike? Karate expert. Well, none of us are karate experts, but I know. Okay. And let's go back to the original question. What was your occupation? How good they were. Nice. What did you do for a living? Birth. You did not give birth for a living. Try again, Henry. I hear it. Henry, what did we just hear out of the church? I'm only asking two questions. Those two things. Feel free to answer any one of those two questions. No, it's in the Pacific. Seven. 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 Mm, that's small. Henry Timrod. No one already yeah. pissed off. How many people are here with us? How many people? How many 
Warrior. Can we not? 5365. Henry Kimra, how many people are here with you? That answer is normally five, by the way, when we talk that answer, right? Let me know if any word pop up on either yes. of Henry Kimra, let's go back to your wife. Can you tell us what Four your, nine. Tell us what your wife's name is, please. Four. Four. More. Four more. Do you know what time it is? I'm free. Is it Henry? Right. Finally, it's easy. You gotta give us some more details. I'm gonna get it. Henry, be very specific. Use the frequencies that we're listening to to give us enough to do what you need. Every time you cry. <laughs> I'm hearing it through in my head. <laughs> Henry Kimrod, can you tell us the name of your wife, please? Of her name? Yes, her name. What was her name? A lot closer together. Yeah, we normally are a lot tighter. But I need you to tell me the name of your wife. A radio. It's almost like three blind mice going on. Chinese letters. <laughs> Don't have time. Henry, he would be the one speaking. You're in jeopardy. Up. Henry, apparently only giving messages to one person and they have the wrong answers. Tell us the name of your wife, please. One tap away. It's been about four and a half minutes, if everybody knows. Again, it doesn't take long. Home improvement. Great. Buy a warranty, right? <laughs> you know what happened? It's about to run out. Let's talk about your son. Do you want us to talk about your son? That's a yes, no question. And if. <laughs> Henry, yes, Find a way. Trust. You should trust me. I'm here every damn night. Henry, do you want us to talk about your son? Yes or no? Discovery. Humphrey? Profiteer. Truth? Tell us your son's birthday. A very specific holiday. What's the holiday for your son? Who? Four. Five hundred dollars. Keep your family. Kid. It's a conference. challenge. Family and kid. It's like we can be sensitive about what happened to your son. Just give us his name or his birthday and we'll know that you're actually here. Everything's safe. Crispy. <laughs> It appears twice. It's heart shaped. We've only got three minutes left, Henry. I asked a lot of questions. Same questions I ask every night. Great. We want to go back to the church. Can you tell us what church you heard the bell from? Mansion. And it's devastating. Source speaker. Beach. Eleven AM. Second time eleven showed up too. Anybody else catch that? Inventory. Henry, we're going to wrap this up if you're not going to give us any direct answers. Would you like us to stop this whole session? That's a yes, no answer. <coughs> Way out there.
in this city. And you're not giving us a whole lot. I need a yes no answer. You want to stop? Pain. Now. Factory. Lots of audio. And the bright light. Yes, feeling okay? Yeah. Sweet. Nobody was breathing weird or anything like that. Um, we were sitting at